Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. On today's episode of the things you may have missed in Elden Ring, we're going to start covering Mount Gelmir, finally picking up that map, and after a few caves and boss fights and some very juicy items, we'll be finishing up at the entrance to the Volcano Manor. We're going to immediately jump into the first tip because I was invaded straight away by Anastasia Tarnished Eater whilst I was still trying to set up for the video. So once we've defeated her, I can show you exactly where we are on the map. She'll also drop her sacred butchering knife for you. And now, as you can see, all I did off screen was start at the Road of Iniquity side path, Site of Grace, followed the road down to the southwest, picked up the Bridge of Iniquity, Site of Grace, followed the main road along, and now I'm just here on the map. So once you've defeated her, you can come into the shack here and also grab yourself the Golden Vow, and then carry on heading west down the road, and at the end of this broken bridge is a Stone Sword Key. I'm now going to walk back to this Site of Grace, and I'll call out and show you if there are any important items along the way. And whilst I'm doing that, if it's your first time here and you enjoy this kind of content, please consider subscribing to the channel, and if you like the video, please give it a like and let me know in the comments. As we're running back along this path, you'll see there are a bunch of Abductor Virgin enemies you need to be very careful of. They're hard enough by themselves, but if you're unlucky and not too aware of your surroundings, you can easily aggro three of them at once. So I'm just going to mount up and run through the area, grabbing all the loot as we go. So just where you've got two of them in close succession here, you can get yourself five explosive great bolts and a golden rune eight. A little bit further back down the road, you've got six throwing daggers. And where you see this one fighting two soldiers, you can pick up some arterial leaf. And then round the back of this rock is three blood rows. At this point, I end up getting summoned to another player's world to help defend them against a bloody finger. I was going to cut this out of the video, but I'll leave this in because it's quite an entertaining fight to watch and it gives me a minute to waffle on at you. So I entered into the world and both of the bloody fingers were fighting each other and I end up killing both of them. So whilst you're watching me do that, I'd also love to ask you to follow me on other channels as well. In the coming week or so, I'm going to start streaming on Twitch again so we can do some live playthroughs on there together. And if you want to keep up to date with channel updates, make sure you head over and follow me on Twitter. And for a few behind the scenes photos here and there, we also have an Instagram. Links to all them channels are down in the description and it would mean so much to me if you'd go and follow me on my other channels to help the channel grow. Thank you so much. And now this fight's ended, we'll go into the next tip. Now that you've grabbed the items from this area, start heading back the way we came, run past all the abductor virgins, and you can sneak up to this ladder here and just beeline it for the top of the cliff. Once you get to the top of the ladder, Turn left and you'll see a load of golden runes on these tombs here. There'll be a somber smithing stone 6 on the corpse in this chair right on the edge of the cliff. And then you can also activate this site of grace. We'll rest here and I'll meet up with you again for the next tip. As you start heading west towards this tower, you'll see a battlefield with a load of soldiers mourning their dead. Kill them all. Kill them till they're dead. Help them join their friends. And as I'm clearing them out, actually, great tip for you here. Use any items that increase your item discovery, such as the Silver Foul Foot. And also, I believe Arcane, the Arcane stat, increases your discovery as well. There's also probably another one or two items that will boost your item discovery I'm forgetting about. And the reason you want to do this, this is a great farming spot for smithing stones. These guys will drop smithing stones 3, 4 and 5 quite frequently and there's loads of them in a big group and they're really easy and really quick to kill. So if you need to farm some mid-game smithing stones, this is a fantastic area to do so. Once you've had your fun and you've got all the loot, head a bit further up and you can kill this mad pumpkin head as well. Now you can head all the way to the top of the tower, grabbing the fire arrows halfway up and then you can loot the pulley bow right at the top. Clear out the rest of the guards and you can loot the sacramental buds and the volcano stones if you want. And now as you come right to the edge here, you'll see a load of rainbow stones scattered along. And a message that says rainbow stones lead the way to riches. I call bullshit. <laughs> if you head just to the other side of this massive rock, you'll see patches hiding in the bushes. Oh, don't, don't mind me, go about your business, he says. Oh, well, you might want to go check out the shimmering. Hmm. Hmm. It's quite fun to do it. I love Patch's cutscenes. In my first playthrough, I did do this, but I'm deliberately going to ignore him and avoid it because it's then going to be easier for me to show you the natural progression route because 
spoiler alert here for anyone that wants to skip the next five seconds, he will sneak up behind you and yeet you off the cliff. And then you're in a completely different area that we'll be visiting ourselves in our own time later on in the series. So we're going to ignore patches and move on to the next tip. Before we move into the next area, whilst we're on the map here, I just wanted to explain that even though it looks like we are kind of cutting through the middle of this area and we are missing things, we are doing this in a logical order and we'll be revisiting the areas that we've gone past in later videos. Because this is such a mountainous region, there's lots of different levels, so the areas that it looks like I've missed on the map are actually below us. And then right over to the northeast here, there's a huge area that I'm circling, and that's a whole separate area itself, that's the Shaded Castle. So once we've done Mount Gelmir, and we'll probably do Volcano Manor first as well, then we'll come back and do the Shaded Castle afterwards. So now that I've talked you through that, we'll keep heading southeast. Before long, you'll come to a pack of wolves and some loot that you can grab. I was going to just run past them all, but I noticed that one of them has got the glowing eyes. And for anyone that doesn't know, enemies with glowing eyes give you 10 times the amount of runes that they usually give you. So this direwolf here just gave me over 2,000 runes. And then a little bit further along still, we'll now be at the entrance to the Gelmir Heroes Cave. So open the door, take the lift down, and I'll meet you down there. This is a monster of a cave, and quite a difficult one as well, because it requires navigating a lot of traps. Specifically the giant chariots that can one-shot you depending on your health and resistances. So once you come down, I'll do my best to talk you through where you need to go and what you need to do. As soon as you come into this room, run down, you'll see the chariot spawn in right at the end of the room, and two skeletons will run at you from either side. You can then go and hide in one of the holes that the skeletons just came out of and fend the skeletons off as the chariot goes past you. Then once either you or the chariot has dealt with the skeletons, wait for it to go down and then come back up again. And as it's coming up and going past you, sprint past it, go down and jump into the little cubby hole on the right where there's a skeleton archer. Deal with him and then wait for it to go all the way down and back up again. This time it will stop right outside your room so now you can run down with it, following just behind it. A skeleton will launch out towards you from the left. By the time he picks himself up, the chariot will come past and annihilate him, so wait here while it does that. When it comes past you on the way back down, follow it down even further still. Then you can run and hide in the room on the right here, with another skeleton in. Wait for the next time that the chariot goes up, because this will give you longer to reach the next destination. Now you can run down, hop over the lava, and into the room on the left here. You can grab the Grave Glove Wart 7, then head into this room with a load of Wandering Nobles and a few pages. So we'll deal with the enemies, and then we'll move on to the next area. There's a weapon right at the end of the room we just come from that I very nearly forgot to call out to you. So before you progress through any further, what you actually want to do is come back on yourself, wait for the chariot to go up to the top of the hallway, and you can roll all the way down through the lava. Don't worry, the chariot won't follow you all the way down, and the lava really doesn't do that much damage. Once you've rolled all the way to the bottom, you can grab some more glove wart on the right, then head all the way to the left, and you'll grab yourself the ringed finger hammer, which is genuinely a giant finger. This thing is disgusting. You hold the bloody stump. Its special ability makes the finger swell up and flick out. It's absolutely grim. Like, what the fuck is that? Okay, once you've made that detour and grabbed the ringed finger weapon, as I say, come back into this room and clear out all the enemies if you haven't already. There's some more glove wart that you can grab, and then up above will be one of the fire-breathing imp statues. Smack it to make it go down, and then as you're coming out and into this next area, be very careful when you poke your head out because a chariot will fly past. Then you can turn right and go up to the top of this corridor and grab yourself a stone sword key. If you time it well, you can run back into the room you were just in and not get walloped like I did. Now start making your way down this corridor, timing each little sprint with the movements of the chariot as you did the first time. And then once you've gone past the second cubby hole, as you're running across this bridge, if you're very careful, you can drop off the right-hand side here and onto this little ledge. 
If you're struggling with this drop and you keep falling into the lava, there is another way to traverse this area. If you time your sprints well, you can just run all the way down with the chariot using the same technique we have done up to this point. Some people find that method easier. I find the jumping onto the ledge method easier. And once we're down here, you'll see a bloodhound knight with his back turned to you. Once you've taken him out, you will get the bloodhound knight armor set. And you can then loot the corpse that was just in front of him and get the Gelmir armor set at the same time as well. Two armor sets for the price of one. Now jump up this ladder and what we need to do to progress to the next area is actually jump onto these wooden beams and then you can drop down and land on top of the chariot and the chariot will carry you down into the next area. But before then, what we're gonna do is drop down and deal with this cemetery shade and he'll drop his weapon. It's a guaranteed drop to get the Mantis Blade once you kill him. You can go back up the ladder, come onto the beams, and as long as you time it well enough, then you can drop onto the chariot, and it'll take you down to the next area. As the chariot's taking you down to the end of this room, keep an eye on the right-hand side. You'll see there's a little hole in the wall with a lootable corpse and a ladder. As the chariot's going back up, you want to jump off as close to this as possible, and then frantically roll into this little hole. You can grab the beast blood off the corpse, up the ladder, and then through these doors. And finally, we have made it to the boss. Well done. This is not an easy dungeon. Congratulations. Luckily, there is a stake of Marika right here as well. So if you do struggle with the boss, at least you don't have to do that every single time. Come through and you'll be faced with the Red Wolf of the Champion. He's in a much bigger arena than the other Red Wolf we fought at Rhea Lucaria. So in theory, this should be easier because you've got more room to run around and keep your distance from him. Just employ the exact same tactics that you employed for the other wolf. And once you've defeated him, you'll get the Bloodhound Knight Flaw. I don't know how you pronounce that. I'm assuming it's Flaw. And then from the chest at the end, you can grab yourself the Death Root. And we're done here. Monster of a cave. Well done. We've made it and we can move on to the next tip now. For the next tip, meet me back where Patches was just by the tower, and we're going to head northwest over this makeshift bridge. On the other side, a grafted scion will drop down, take him out, and it'll give you an absolutely pathetic amount of runes and nothing else. And then right by this cart, you can grab yourself the scavenger's curved sword. There's nothing else to loot down here, so head up the ladder, and then immediately turn left and run all the way to the end you'll see a soldier getting absolutely murderized by these marionettes. I desperately try and save him every time I come here. Unfortunately, I don't think it's possible to. There's no loot worthy of coming over here. It's just a fun scene to see play out. And now there is absolutely nothing else on this level, so we can start heading up the ladder. You'll see there's two ladders. As you're facing them, you want to take the ladder that's on your right. Halfway up here, you can loot five great arrows. Then climb up the next ladder. And then once you've dealt with all the enemies that you've inevitably aggroed, come to the south cliff edge, and you can drop down to where the other ladder would have taken you. And here you'll find yourself a merchant. He gives you a stone sword key and the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 20, which lets you make volcano pots. Also a plethora of arrows and bolts, a guilty hood, and the Confessor's armor set. So grab anything that you want from here, then head up the ladder, and we'll now be right at the top of the mountain. We have finally scaled Mount Gelmir. Nearly. There's a bunch of knights up here, but no loot, so you don't have to take them out. And they're a bit more challenging than the other knights we've faced, because they're all inflicted with madness, so they can all cast madness incantations. Once you've either ignored them or taken them out, head southwest and go over this wooden bridge. You can then activate a Sight of Grace. Now, if you want, you can run back along again into this camp and grab three eyes of yellow. And to wrap up this tip, we're going to keep heading towards the northwest. And eventually, just behind this big demi-human, we'll find an entrance to Volcano Cave. And we'll go through Volcano Cave together right now. Volcano Cave is a very short one. There is literally two things of note here. There's a shield and the boss. I'm gonna do the boss first and then I'll come back to the entrance and show you where the shield is. Take out all the demi-humans you encounter. Then you can take the northwest exit from this room here. Grab the golden rune six and drop down. Take out all of these demi-humans too. And from here, do a 180. Go behind you and you'll find there's a room right there where you can find the shield. 
I did this cave in a really silly order and did the boss first, but as you're here, you may as well turn around, grab the shield right now, and then continue progressing through where I'm going towards the boss. So once you've got the shield, drop down again and take out the big demi-human. Then you can loot five lumps of flesh here, and facing east, you'll see the door to the boss right there. Through here is demi-human Queen Margot, who is um, pathetically weak. So once she has been absolutely annihilated, you'll be rewarded with the jar cannon. And that's it for this one, so we'll move on to the final couple of tips for this area. Teleport back to the 9th Mount Gelmir campsite, that way unlocked at the start of the last tip, and then prepare yourself before either climbing up the ladder to the left, or jumping up the spirit spring just here. And once you're at the top, you will pretty much immediately be thrown into a boss fight with the full grown Falling Star Beast, who is a super mega version of the Falling Star Beast that we fought a couple of videos ago. The tactics to fight him remain exactly the same, but he's significantly tougher. Even with my Dragon Knight helping out, I ended up having to cheese him, just spamming magic on horseback quite significantly. He is a tough bastard. And once you manage to fell him, you'll get a Somber Smithing Stone 6, 5 Smithing Stone 6, and the Falling Star Beast Jaw, which is a crazy powerful weapon with an awesome weapon art. It's that strong that it's actually being used by certain speedrunners and no hit runners at the moment. Now that you've done that, finally, we see Volcano Manor. It looks so impressive off in the distance here, doesn't it? With the huge pool of lava sat right in the middle. So now to get out of the qua the quater, so now to get out of the crater, head west and hop off the rocks here down below. Keep following the path down. We'll encounter an invisible scarab that I try and fail to kill. So I'll ignore him for now and we'll revisit him in the next video. For now, grab a golden seed from here. And then we're going to start off by heading north and loop round to the underside of the mountain. I'm just going to ignore all the finger creepers because I really want to unlock a site of grace and not die. And then right near the bottom, we finally have the map. Oh, it's a sight to behold, isn't it? We've had to do this entire area mapless. And then just a little bit further down, you get the Road of Iniquity site of grace. And that's it. We've now unlocked the map and we've done the whole of the north of Mount Gelmir. There's a couple of areas that are technically in the north that we haven't covered yet, such as the Minor Erd Tree. But as I explained earlier, that's actually below us, and we'll be doing that very soon in an upcoming video. That's all there is for this one. All I have left to say is thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.